Since 1990, expeditions supported by the Scientific Exploration Society have been working closely with the Bardia National Park Wildlife Department, studying the fauna and flora and giving aid to the local community. Situated in western Nepal, Bardia is now joined to the Banki National Park and covers almost 900 square miles. The Karnali River forms the western boundary and the Babai River flows right through the park. The varied geographical factors, together with the cover of sow forests, jungle and grasslands, make this an ideal wild animal habitat. Some 53 different mammals, over 400 species of birds and many types of reptile, including some large python, are found here. The freshwater genetic dolphin can be seen in the Karnali and both the fish-eating gharial and the marsh mugger crocodiles are common. In 1991, our expedition discovered an unusually large bull elephant that measured 11 foot 3 at the shoulder. His massive domed head, enormous tusks and huge body led local people to believe this was a mammoth. However, our research, headed by the eminent Professor Adrian Lister of the British National History Museum, showed it to be a type of Indian elephant. Eventually, we found over 50 of these large, dome-headed elephants in the park. Raja Garj, or King Elephant as he was known, disappeared around 2010. He was possibly drowned in the flooded Karnali River when he was around 70 years of age. However, his offspring appear to be thriving and depict similar features. In March 2019, our new team of 20 worked with the Bardia Nature Conservation Club under Mr Rajan Chowdhury and used five domestic elephants provided by Mr Ashok Budari of the Wildlife Department. Professor Alistair Driver of Exeter University headed the scientific studies by our group, which included several with previous experience in Bardia. Our task was to catalogue the wildlife, especially the tiger, rhino and elephant, and encourage the local people to protect these animals. And this we did by refurbishing a school and giving medical and dental aid. It is now believed that the park is home to 87 Royal Bengal tiger, 37 Indian one-horned rhino, and some 120 wild elephant. Namaste Nepal. Namaste Nepal. Our expedition started in the ancient city of Kathmandu, which is still being repaired from the last massive earthquake. hard times because the lady of the house apparently has been ill um, and we're just going to call and see how they are. We've, we've given them the rest of the money so they've actually got money at the moment but I want to just stop and find out what the real situation is. Um, I'm 
We were totally surprised to arrive and find such a well-organized camp. Our cooks set up an improvised field kitchen and produced some delicious meals. Welcome to Bardia National Park. Okay. Baba. <laughs> yeah. So we are very, very happy. You have a create, you know, you are the creator. You know? So now maybe you, 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 can, you can you can tell something better how you create, how you brought all these guys here. Maybe you have some very good idea. And he has been calling me since the 1960. Young friend, eyesight is a very poor, but they are the smelling and hearing power is very, very good. By smelling, you know, they can remember. And if they come to know, oh, my enemies had, you know, measure the width will be about four inch. And if you weigh, one single piece will weigh more than a six, seven pounds. About uh, <coughs> 400. so this is the method uh, we had uh, applied. <laughs> 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 And so, in the early morning, just as it was getting light, we mounted our elephants and set off on the first safari, seeking elephant, tiger and rhino.
Well, we were going through uh, the bush, which at that point was uh, about five or six feet high. Um, I was sitting in the right front position on the, on the howdah. I uh, initially heard a sort of a growling noise, which uh, had been said in the briefing that that was the first sign that you normally get of a tiger. So I was looking in the right place uh, and the brush started moving um, erratically and, and quickly and then uh, with further growls the, the tiger came rushing out um, from a direction of about 11 o'clock towards the front of, front of the elephant. Uh, it was roaring and covered um, probably not more than 15 or 20 feet um, and then the thanet turned the elephant around very very quickly uh, at which point I lost my view but I gather the tiger stopped its charge at that point and went off at an oblique angle into into the bush uh, and we turned back so that was that was it but it was quite thrilling at the time the whole thing from start to finish was probably no more than five or six seconds I would think it was an afternoon ride going through the f well not the forest more the grasslands and there were f three of us on the elephant with the guide uh, and the driver the thanet and we'd been chasing a tiger through the tall elephant grass. We kept seeing bits of him and then he would go through and we'd see the grass moving and then we saw another little bit and the grass would move again. And I just turned to my right and there was his face looking at us through the grass. It was wonderful, it was a magical experience just seeing his face looking at us. It's very hard to photograph because the elephant grass was all in front and although we could see him, when you tried to focus the camera, it just didn't seem to work, or my little camera didn't at any rate. It kept focusing on the grass instead of the, uh, the tiger's face. But he was very stunningly beautiful. It was lovely. And how did the tiger react? Well, as soon as we saw him, the tiger just decided to um, move away rapidly. He just sort of growled at us, not, not too fiercely, but a warning growl, and then slunk away to the right. Now in Bardia there are uh, 87 tigers, so one of the best uh, place for the tiger, yeah. Once upon a time, number had gone down, only there were uh, two or three left, but now, oh, this is the best uh, place for the tiger. This trip I saw four in one day, all four different tigers. Well, it, I can't remember what day it was, but um, that's the real reason why I came to Bardia and on this expedition. And um, but we were on this our, one of our wonderful elephants. But the, we were fortunate to just have three of us with the naturalist and the elephant man. So there was me, there was Tim, and there was Keith. And um, Deepak, our naturalist, um, we were going through the grassland and there was an area, uh, the, the, the river and an area of a, a sandbank and all of a sudden Deepak got very very excited and um, grabbed my back and pointing over to the right hand side and there was this adult female tiger lying on the sand um, very well camouflaged by the grassland and she was looking so relaxed and Deepak thought actually that perhaps she'd had a meal so she was replete and so she was just lying in the sunshine then her head came up and her ears were twitching with all the flies and, and whatever um, and she looked over at us I mean we were about a hundred yards away and the elephant was silent um, and uh, so not concerned and it was obvious that the tiger wasn't concerned about our presence 
and um, and then she put her head down then she yawned and she was just so it, it was such a special time we were able to we were probably there waiting for the other elephants to come and join us for maybe five minutes and we just stood in that same position which we didn't, we didn't try to get any nearer um, and she just became a bit concerned as she, as she realized that another elephant was approaching from our left side um, and so she she sat you know her head came up and her neck sort of you know came right up and she started looking and then when she realized that we were being joined by another elephant and another group she um, she got up and slunk away into the grassland um, away but it was magical absolutely fantastic and it's the reason why I came here was to see tigers because I've seen lots of elephants in the wild but I mean they're they're wonderful creatures but to see a tiger in the wild like that but she was so relaxed you know she just didn't have a bother um, yeah, so she was looking very satisfied with herself. We aim to produce uh, an updated version of the map of the Bardia National Park. And Tim Harrison, our surveyor, led the team to do this. Professor Adrian Lister led our zoological research and we were soon moving throughout the jungle looking at the various bugs and beetles and some of the bigger animals. We had our own domestic elephant but we were also hoping to see some of the wild elephants that are known to be in this area. But the bird life as John Mackenzie Grieve found were absolutely fantastic. Yeah, so this is the mighty Kanali River, which um, comes all the way from the Tibet border, um, some 150 kilometers away, and it runs for another couple of hundred kilometers further downstream. But right here, it splits uh, into the Gerua River, which runs right past our camp, and, uh, and the Kanali Main River itself. And this is the spot, the very spot, where I saw a river dolphin the other day. Gangetic river dolphin. Only the one. Um, they're very scarce here and in fact they haven't been seen here for several years but as it happened somebody saw one the following day in the same location so that reassured me. Quiet, we get down and we see some bird maybe cook 
Aphrodite. In some of the swamplands, we came across the dreaded mugger man-eating crocodiles. have a bigger threat I think uh, is a, a hydro uh, or, or irrigation dam because uh, they, they are uh, making a dam further up uh, near the bridge and they are uh, you know trying to take the water from the canal. So once uh, they will take the water so there will be problem in this area. Our own elephants loved having a bath at the end of the day. Bathing in the river, we also found the rhino. Been body probably about six times. Um, I think I've been here four or five times. The first time was in 1999, so I've been coming here for 20 years, and it's just such a lovely place, it's fantastic. Um, the wildlife Different. has 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 changed over the mm -hmm. years, but I don't know whether that's because of the season that we come in, or whether the weather's changing. In previous trips, we've had a lot more elephant sightings, a lot of rhino sightings, but fewer, um, yeah. but fewer tiger sightings. And this time we've had a plethora of tigers um, and some rhino, but the elephants no. seem to be in a different part of the park at the moment. We've been told they're possibly in the Bardia, um, and I think that happened on John's first trip in 92 or 90, 91, 92. Yeah, they, they seem to be possibly in the Babai Valley, which is to the east of the Bardia. In the next few days, we're, we're going on jeeps. So we've, we've spent the last five and a half days going around the riverine forest next to the rivers um, on elephant back. And now we're going to have a look at different habitats in the east of the, the park, which is mainly sal forest. Um, and to see what's there and hopefully find some of the elephants. And it necessitates a long trip in the jeep. Um, <coughs> but as I say, hopefully we'll find them in the Babai region and we'll be able to see some wild elephants. Highlights so far is just seeing elephants because like Tessa, I'm crazy about elephants. But we certainly saw plenty of domestic ones riding them, listening to them in the morning as they crashing through the, the forest. Perfect. Yeah, I think the, the being on the domestic elephants here is, is a fantastic experience that you don't get anywhere else. Um, as Sue said, they just bulldoze through everything and seeing how the fanets um, manage the elephants and tell them where to go and what to do and the communication between the fanet and the naturalist of what signs they've seen and showing the elephants where to go which routes to take magical Shangri-La the park has a plentiful supply of deer which from the point of view of the tigers is rather a good thing uh, but we were lucky to see the swamp deer and even later on a baby foal uh, that was one of the spotted deer 
and I was very fortunate also to get a shot of a samba, the first I've ever really got like that in all the years I've been there. Although they were there, we saw very little evidence of the large herd of wild elephants. But we did come across one in particular who had a broken tusk and was in a particular bad mood, as you might expect. the local people to protect the animals, we had found support to aid the refurbishment of the BBAS school. The Newport Uskmouth Rotary Club had been marvellous and also Anna Nicholas had got various friends to contribute and with this we refurbished the school and also provided a plentiful supply of school books. <laughs> My and my guardians and the students also. So, uh,
While Branco, our dentist, was soon hard at work, the people's dental hygiene is not up to much. Of the tooth, where is it? No, that's just half the tooth, the other half is beneath the gum. Yes. Maybe could you give me some suction, please? <laughs> oh, no. It's primitive. <laughs> to encourage the children to protect the animals, whenever they'd had their teeth taken out, we presented them with a puppet of an animal and said to them, now you can report poachers and others who might endanger the creatures in the park. One morning we were very lucky to find a pack of otters crossing our path. In the swamplands we first of all spied a jackal. <laughs> Ram Din showed the team how to carry out tracking along one of the riverbeds. We used inflatable boats to do a survey down the banks of the Karnali River. The boat trip was really good. We, uh, there were five of us, two guides, uh, going down on an inflatable. Uh, we were lucky enough to be in the first boat and we were just cruising down the river nicely, gently. And all of a sudden we saw the tiger on the edge of the bank. And he was actually laid on his back like a pussycat with his legs in the air and he turned his head backwards to have a look at us and he was so chilled, it was wonderful and we came along and he slowly got up but we stayed over on the other bank and he just didn't bother about us at all and then something seemed to bother him a little bit so he walked a little bit away and just got in the grass but only in the edge of the grass and we could still see him and he was just so relaxed we obviously didn't bother him at all and people got fabulous photographs and videos and it made my trip. It was absolutely magnificent. They literally guess they could not run, they could not do anything. We're sitting here by the side of the road because there's a big tusker in the bushes down there, um, which they think is Bahadur Gaj, one of the elephants that's been seen in previous years. And we've seen him in among the trees, but we're hoping that he'll come and cross the road, in which case we can take some good photographs and hopefully get a distance measurement from which we can then calculate how big he is. We can see the elephant through yeah. the trees here. We better go. Over there. So we can see him and he's almost certainly Bahadur Gaj.
What are the kind of things that people come to see him for? They go out of their mind uh, mm -hmm. and uh, they are awake, but they see uh, like speed going, you know, storm coming, like thunder coming, and some people who they come with the uh, disabled situation, like you know, uh, paralysis. Okay. Yeah. And sword bullet, sword bullet, two of the bispin pants. He cures right. even the snake yeah. bite. The sabre to pin. Some people uh, take it by feet. Sabre to pin. Yeah. We take to the journal snake hospital. This hospital certifies the person is dead. Take to the funeral. They bring him here. He give, he ask like and two hours. hours. So at the end of the expeditions we always have, we traditionally have a Burns night and the reason that we have this is because we like to share something of our culture with the local culture and in terms of the British Isles probably the most memorable kind of ceremony we could have is to actually have a Burns night because we don't have the equivalent of anything in, in England really. So it's also fun because everybody gets dressed up and we have dancing and we have the presentation of the haggis so it makes quite a spectacle. So they always seem to enjoy it and they enjoy the dancing at the end too. Good evening lads and lassies, welcome to the SES 2019 um, supper. His knife's the rustic labour dight and catch ye up with ready slight. <laughs> Vegetarians may choose to look away. <laughs> Not more fresh fruits. And we like to start off by giving some binoculars, which have been donated from people in England, uh, to mainly the guides and the leading helpers. But the first one I'd like to give is to the person who has looked after us in the camp, and that is Gary. Where is Gary?
And the next one um, is uh, Sundip. 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 Right, uh, could we now have the people with their binoculars uh, just in front here? Put the... <coughs> hey, this is Rajan Chaudhary. Uh, uh, one of the naturalists from Badiana Park, uh, and I have been doing the, this job uh, since last two decades, more than two, 20 years. And uh, <clears throat> Badia is one of the very uh, famous national park in terms of, uh, of its uh, rich biodiversity, uh, especially for the tiger and its uh, 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 prey species. And uh, um, uh, the number of uh, wildlife here in Badia National Park is increasing. Uh, so um, uh, we also have a confrontation increasing with the local people living around. So I believe uh, along with the uh, sustainable conservation of this uh, 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 exclusive wildlife like tiger, wild elephant, rhino, uh, so many other different types of animals in the park, uh, it also needs to be promoted as the ecotourism so that the local people will understand the importance of the uh, <coughs> conservation of this crown jewel of nature, this wildlife. Uh, and uh, uh, since 2010 to 2022, uh, WWF wants to double the number of tigers. And so far, Bali has been one of the most successful uh, 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 place for increasing the number of tigers. Uh, and we believe it's all because of the highly involvement of uh, uh, local people, uh, along with the, all the stakeholders. Uh, the local people like me uh, and my friends, a lot of uh, school people, uh, all the local people, they are highly involved in conservation. So uh, as a result, we have been able to increase the number of uh, all animals. The park has been very well protected. So I believe uh, ecotourism uh, will be help a lot to increase uh, the betterment of the national park and surrounding uh, of the people living here. The expedition was able to give some grants to local people injured by the animals. This man had been attacked by one of the park's own elephants. called in at the local radio station to thank them for their kind work and help in the preserving of the animals and they presented us with some t-shirts. And then we went on to visit the Pareya family. These poor people had lost the uh, father of the family uh, at an earlier expedition when a wild elephant had attacked the farm and killed him. And so we clubbed together and raised the money to educate the three children. And here, five years later, we were meeting the children who are now setting off on their various careers. I'm 18 now. By 23, he's planning to join us. 23? Yeah. To be a soldier permanently? 
And so we mounted up on our bus and headed back to Nepal Gunge to catch the plane to Kathmandu after a very successful and most enjoyable expedition. It's been wonderful, you know. I think um, I think the age group has been just spot on. I think teenagers would have been a bit of a nightmare out here in the jungle, but everyone's handled it remarkably well. And how have you enjoyed being the photographer on the trip? It's been the best because I get all the best seats in the jeep, I get the best seats on the elephant, I get all the best views. I'm the one that gets called out when there's a jackal feeding on it. It's great. It's brilliant. I've loved every minute of it. I think I've got to know everyone quite well, um, realised who doesn't like being photographed and then I hunt them down and photograph them more just to upset them all. So in general I think I've got to know everyone really well. Phenomenal. Awesome. A privilege. Delightful. Ultima memorabilitous. Magnificent. Fantastic. Incredible. Tasteful. But I would say adventurous. Magical. Extraordinary. Hugely enjoyable. Paradise. Transformative. Unforgettable. Magical. Absolutely fantastic. 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 Namaste Nepal.